Okay, in section 8.2, we are going to discuss dealing with rational functions in terms of multiplying and dividing them. And so, if you would, if you find page 437 in your book, we're going to look at uh, a couple of examples from your book in terms of multiplying. And the first one is number one. We have 5x times 5 over x, that is, over times 2 over x. So again, we have a rational function here, rational function here. And if we multiply them, we're going to multiply them just like we would any other fraction. And we're going to multiply and get 10 on top, and we're going to get x squared on the bottom, and we'll be done. Now, <coughs> that one is, you know, essentially the simplest type. I want to remind you, though, before we get started with another one, that if I had something like, uh, let's say, 4 over 9, and then I had 3 over 7, one of the, technique that one of the techniques that we learned in elementary school was that we could go ahead and multiply the tops, and we could get 12 over 63, and that would be fine, except for we can divide both of those by 3, and we'd get 4 and 21. We can do that. We can multiply straight up originally and then reduce afterwards. But one of the things that we found in elementary school when we first learned how to deal with fractions is that, whoops, three sevenths, that is. When I uh, have the situation where this one or this one, if they can be reduced, we certainly will, which these, then neither of these can. But we can also reduce across the multiplication signs. So the fact that we have a three here and a nine here, we can make that a one and we can make that a three. And then we could directly go from four. 3 times 7 and get 4 21st without having to reduce at the end, which is really a convenient technique, and that's a technique that we're going to be using here when we have uh, situations with rational functions that have letters involved. And so if you would uh, take a look at uh, number 5 next, we have 5p cubed, and we have 4p to the, or 4p minus 8, multiplying that by 3 pi, or 3p minus 6, and then 10p to the 8th over here. So <coughs> here's the, the strategy that we're going to use for this one is we're going to uh, use a very similar strategy we did in Lesson 8.1, which means we're going to factor anything that can be factored first and cross out any common factors. Okay? So I would take this one and factor out a 4, because we have a GCF there. Factor this one, and we get a 3 out of it. Um, as I factor those, I'd cross out the originals. Now I'm working with these two. And then here, what we want to do is look for anything on top or bottom, whether it be crosswise or straight above, that is going to cancel. So we can see number-wise that the 5 and the 10 will cancel, make that a 2 and make that a 1. We got a p to the 3 and a p to the 8th. We know that that p to the 3 is going to cancel out and make that p to the 5th. We have a p to the p minus 2 and a p minus 2. And then we have a 3 and a 4, and those, of course, don't cancel. So we're done with the reducing part. And again, what's nice is that we've made this into, you know, from all the stuff that we had into very, not very much stuff left. Everything else is crossed out. All we have left on top is a 1 and a 3. And all we have left on the bottom is a 4 and a 2p to the 5th. So we ultimately get 8p to the 5th. And that would be our final answer. So we turned out, looked like a you know, fairly complicated function into <coughs> a fairly simple function when we do the multiplication and we do the reducing first. And the key is, is doing the reducing part first before we do the multiplication part. So let's move over to the practice test. Start with uh, number 14. The practice test, we got 4g squared. We got 9h squared, 7h squared here, and 3g to the fifth here. So ultimately, <coughs> numbers wise here, we have a 4 and a 9 and a 7 and a 3. Those don't reduce. 4 and 3 don't reduce. 7 and 9 don't reduce. However, we do have h squared and h squared. Those could both be gone. And then we have a g squared and a g to the fifth. So that g squared and that g to the fifth will cancel and make this one a g to the 3. Because this one is a 5 and 2, so it's 3 bigger. So ultimately, final answer then, multiply the tops. 7 times 4 is the only thing left. We get 28. On the bottom, we have a 9 <coughs> and a 3 and a g to the third. So we get 27g to the third. And we're good to go. OK. <coughs> One more from the practice test. While we're here, we get to number 8. We'll go back up to. So number 8 says y squared minus 16, negative 5y times 4y y plus 4. And again, I can't stress enough how, how important it is that before we do any reducing at all, we make sure that we factor anything that can be factored. We should recognize here that we have y squared minus 16. That's going to be our difference of two perfect squares. So y plus 4 times y minus 4. And with that, <coughs> we can see that we have a y plus 4 and a y plus 4. Those can go. One thing that people generally miss here is that we have a y here and a y here. Okay. Those can go. So we'll get rid of the y's. And the 4 and 5, of course, don't reduce. And so on top, we'd have 4 times y minus 4. And on the bottom, we'd have negative 5. And so that right there would be our final answer for number 8. Okay. All right. <coughs> well, let's take
take a look at uh, <coughs> one more example here uh, from your book, and that would be number 19. We'll go back to your book, number 19, we're on page 438. And we have uh, 2k squared minus 32. And we have k squared minus 2k minus 24. And, <coughs> and we're doing divided by, and we have k plus 6 on top, and we have k squared minus 7k plus 6 on the bottom. Now, <coughs> notice that we've switched gears here. Now we're doing a division problem. So here's uh, why this is uh, going to be very nice for us, because any division problem we learned early on can be changed to a multiplication problem. And the change that we make is we take the first one that we had our original over here on the left, and we change it to a multiplication sign, and then what we do is we take this and we flip it. So we take the flip or the reciprocal and we write the bottom on the top, top on the bottom. And the answer to this is exactly the same as the answer to this. So the question is how do we divide two rational numbers? Well, we change it to a multiplication problem. And we already know how to deal with the multiplication problem because we've uh, been doing that so far. And let's review to deal with this situation. Uh, we don't want to multiply the tops and bottoms at this point. We want to reduce first. So on the top left here, we'd have a 2. And if we took that out, we'd have k squared minus 16. And on the bottom here, we did our AC method. We could change that to k and k. And this would be minus 6 and plus 4. So we factored that properly. And up here, we'd have a k and a k, minus 6 and minus 1, and then we'd have k plus 6 right here on the bottom of this fraction. So, the question is are we done factoring? And the answer is no, because we should recognize here that we also have a difference in perfect squares. So I'd go k plus 4, k minus 4. So, change it to that. And if we look, what do we have that's uh, cross out worthy? We can cross out a k minus 6 and a k minus 6 on the top and bottom. We have a k plus 4 here and a k plus 4 here, and that's it. We don't have anything else that's in common, any common factors, so ultimately we'd have 2 on top, k minus 4, k minus 1, and on the bottom we have nothing left but a k plus 6, and that would be our final answer. Now, one thing we might ask is, uh, do we need to multiply this part out? And the answer is absolutely not. So anytime we do this multiplication or division of rational numbers, feel free to just leave it in the factored form. Do not multiply this stuff out. You can if you want to, but there's really no good reason to, so let's uh, <coughs> make it uh, a rule for us that we do not multiply those out. Okay. All right, I want to do uh, one more of, of those, <coughs> um, and we're going to do the one from our practice test. So what you find with me, number 10 on the practice test. We have s squared plus 5s, and then we have s squared plus 2s minus 15. And it's divided by s plus 2, s minus 3. So again, the first uh, move in any division problem is to uh, rewrite the first part. And then take the second part. I'm going to change it to multiply and then flip it. All right, so we got the multiplication problem made. And in our general strategy for multiplying rationals, we're going to factor anything that can be factored. We can see that in this top part, they both have an s in common. So we could write s times s plus 5. On the bottom, we'd have s plus 5 and s minus 3. And on this side, these are both uh, not factorable. There's nothing to factor out of those. And so we can see, cross out wise, we got an s plus 5 and an s plus 5. Those could go. We got an s minus 3 and an s minus 3. Those could go. And then ultimately, the only thing we have left on top is an s. And on the bottom, we have an s plus 2. And again, what's going to happen if we cross these S's out? We're going to get it wrong every time. So do not cross out those X's, or S's, I should say. Okay, so <coughs> that is the gist of it. So again, in review for uh, the section A2, we are multiplying rational expressions. And our general strategy is to factor the top and bottom of both sides uh, that, of the fractions that we're trying to multiply. Once we have them factored, we look for common factors, and if we have any fact common factors on top and bottom, we cross them out together. And then the other issue is this division process. And with our division process, the key issue is changing it to a multiplication problem by flipping the second one, 
And once we have it into a multiplication problem, then we go back to the same rules that I just discussed. We're going to factor the top and bottom of each of these if possible, cross out any common factors, and then multiply across the top and across the bottom, and we'll have our final answer. So with that said, lots of practice problems in your homework to uh, make sure that we can do this and uh, practice our factoring and make sure that that all works out correctly. And with that, say good luck. <laughs>